Senator Ojo Uzo Kalu has released a lengthy statement thanking family, friends and well wishes during what has been the most challenging five month period and on his right to a fair hearing. He was released after a court nullified the 12 year imprisonment ruling. Still in the studio is Liberos Oshoma to, to take a look. Liberos, I mean, <laughs> why, why should a yeah, statement from uh, why should somebody who should be sober? Right. Um, thanking family as if uh, the court has said go and sin no more. But, but isn't that what it means if uh, everything has been nullified? The court has ordered a, re a, retrial, a retrial and uh, for me he should I expect you know him to be sober. The court did not acquit him of the charges. Mm -hmm. What the court simply did was to say look um, that the judge who delivered the judgment ought not to have delivered the judgment and you know all of that and you know all those you know te technicality that for me I think even though I had seen it you know from a different perspective earlier on but if you look at it from the equity and justice of the matter I expected that the Supreme Court ought to have expanded you know this interpretation instead of looking at it narrowly mm -hmm. because it denies the country of justice you know, uh, justice should not be sacrificed at the altar of mere technicalities. These are the words of, you know, Supreme Court over and mm -hmm. over again. again. And, and so that's why you will hear people like Oju Zokalu today will come out and, uh, and play the victim. You know, very responsible behavior from our leaders. And so with this, what people would begin to see is that, what people perceive is that we have two set of laws, some for the ordinary man and then some for our political leaders. And if you permit me quickly, mm -hmm. I would... Um, I want to take this to the man on the street. Section 253 of the Constitution provides that the Federal High Court shall be duly constituted if it consists of at least one judge, if it can consist of at least one judge of that court. Okay. While Section 296, subsection 7 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, this is where the problem is, provides that notwithstanding the provision of any other law in the country, a judge of the High Court who has been elevated to the Court of Appeal shall have dispensation to continue to sit as a High Court judge only for the purpose of concluding any part hard criminal matter pending before him and at the time of this elevation, I shall conclude same within a reasonable time, provided that this section shall not prevent him from assuming duty as a judge of the Supreme Court. And, and so, lawyers have argued, the Supreme Court have heard that this section 253 that says at least one judge of that court of that court conflicts with section 296 subsection 7 of the administration of criminal justice act and that a judge elevated from the lower court mm -hmm. cannot be said of that court but the question is this section defines what a quorum mm -hmm. is at the lower courts was it was Ojus or Kalu convicted by two courts mm -hmm. two judges it was one judge right. and the ne next the next question would be the, if you look at the provisions of the Constitution, any court that is established by the Constitution, the, it, the Constitution empowers the National Assembly to make laws to regulate the proceedings of that court. And, and so, in portions of that section, empowering the National Assembly to make laws to regulate the proceedings, the National Assembly made the, enacted the Administration of Criminal Justice Act and Section 396 of Subsection 7 of that Act empowers a judge who has been elevated. Mm -hmm. and, and so this section of the Constitution, not in clear terms, not in clear terms, contradicting right. section 397, uh, 396 subsection 7, I do not think that the Supreme Court ought to have narrowly interpreted it. And mind you, secondly, this matter, Aljus Okalu's appeal is still at the Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. What went to the Supreme Court was a Talukutra application by the second respondent, claiming that the judge that sentenced him had been elevated. Lastly, the question the ordinary man on the street would ask is, did that, uh, by that judgment, did Oju Zokalu occasion a miscarriage of justice? Yes, yes. The answer is a no. The court had not said that by this pronouncement that Oju Zokalu wasn't given a fair hearing. We agree that parties cannot by consent confer jurisdiction on, on the court. And, and so can we say in all honesty that by that section 253 mm -hmm. that 
he robs the court of jurisdiction. The judge haven't been elevated. For me, in my opinion, the answer is a no. And, and so I, I would want to di differentiate you know, the position of the Supreme Court from what should have been. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I'm not the court. I won't sit on appeal here over a matter that has been decided. But I had expected that for the justice of the matter, the Supreme Court ought to have looked at the issues and asked the pertinent question, was there a miscarriage of justice here? Mm -hmm. If there were no miscarriage of justice, yes, a judge of that court, since he's, he's a judge, as at the time he delivered the judgment, he had the power to function also as a judge of that court, having been given a fiat by justice of the, court of, the President Court of Appeal, that he can be said to validly function as a judge of that court. Otherwise, that he can't, that shouldn't be the position. Mm -hmm. But with what the Supreme Court had done now, all about more than 50 cases will be affected, right. high profile cases. And so I had this, that's why I, I, I talk about the justice of the matter. And we, we, what we have done now, the, we're taking 10 steps forward and 30 steps backward. backward our our, our uh, intendment to fast track the administration of criminal justice, our intendment to fast track criminal cases, you know, had been nullified and, and slaughtered at the altar of mere, you know, technicality that do not even correlate. Mm. Interesting conversation.